Hello, I'm Britt Eisenberg, Leadership Program Manager for the Gettysburg Foundation, and this is Program Associate Billy Griffith. We're very honored to be able to share the story of one of the more than 160,000 soldiers that found themselves caught up in the center of the tumultuous event that we all know of as the Battle of Gettysburg 160 years ago. The story begins with one leader's consequential decision on July 2nd, the fate of thousands of soldiers hanging in the balance. We are standing here along the Emmitsburg Road in the middle of the Gettysburg Battlefield. Behind us is Cemetery Ridge, which would become the center and left end of the Union line on July 2nd. Tasked with holding the southern part of the ridge was Major General Daniel Sickles' 10,000 man 3rd Corps. During the early afternoon of July 2nd, after learning that there were Confederates along Seminary Ridge across the field to his front, General Sickles grew anxious that the enemy would occupy the high ground along the Emmitsburg Road and place cannon here that would jeopardize his more vulnerable position behind us. Consequently, without any orders from Army Commander George Meade, Sickles took it upon himself to advance his corps in front of Cemetery Ridge and occupy a mile and a half stretch of ground forming a V-shaped line or salient. We are situated along what would become the right end of that salient, occupied by the 26th Pennsylvania Infantry. Though it took time for the fighting to reach the 26th, when it did, it was of the most desperate nature. The regiment was eventually forced to withdraw back toward Cemetery Ridge behind us, like the rest of the 3rd Corps. They took 326 officers and men into battle that day, and by nightfall 213 of them were casualties. Counted among the wounded was 20-year-old Private George W. Wood of Company K. Private Wood was a fisherman from Lazaretto near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He enlisted in the summer of 1861 and survived the first two years of the war unscathed, but his luck ran out here on July 2nd when he was shot in the left leg. We know that Private Wood was able to make it rearward to an unknown hospital site, but his survival was still very much in question. Despite reaching a hospital in the rear, Private Wood unfortunately succumbed to his wounds on July 11, 1863. We're now standing in Gettysburg's Evergreen Cemetery on the eastern slope of Cemetery Hill. In the aftermath of the battle, the wife of the cemetery's caretaker, Mrs. Elizabeth Thorne, was directed by Cemetery President David McConaughey to bury soldiers as fast as possible. At six months pregnant, she commenced the grisly work with her father, John Mosser, and together, over the course of three weeks, they interred 91 soldiers on the east slope of Cemetery Hill. Among them was Private George W. Wood. As the task of cleaning up the disaster at Gettysburg continued, the idea for a national cemetery was conceived. 50 of the 91 soldiers buried in Evergreen were later disinterred and reburied in the new Soldiers National Cemetery just across the hill. Private Wood, however, was never moved. But his story does not end here. A tangible connection to his life and sacrifice keeps his story alive. We invite you to stay tuned in this anniversary to find out more.